Welcome to the final installment of Micrim's three-part series of videos on multitasking. My name is Matt Gordon, and in this video, I'll be going over the source code that comprises two example MicroC OS3 based applications. The examples embody the concepts that I introduced in the first video of this series, and they incorporate the kernel API functions that I covered in the second video. So if you haven't seen those clips yet, it would be a good idea to take a look at them. The Texas Instruments version of MicroM's popular book, MicroC OS3 The Real-Time Kernel, is the basis for this video's examples. The second part of the book describes projects that, much like those I'll cover shortly, target the highly popular TI Avalbot board and were developed with IAR's embedded workbench. Essentially, the examples you'll see in this video are minimalist versions of the book's examples. If you're interested in running the examples that I'll be covering in the video, you can download them from MicroM's website. A self-extracting zip file containing the examples is provided on the site's Texas Instruments Stellaris Downloads page. We'll jump right into the examples now by examining a simple LED blinking application. The IAR Embedded Workbench project for this application incorporates a number of files that are organized into different groups. Two important groups to take note of now are those labeled App and MicroC OS3. As you might expect, the MicroC OS3 group contains the source code for the kernel. The App group encompasses example application code that can serve as a foundation for more complex projects. In this example, the code in the app group contains the MicroC OS3 task that blinks the LEDs. Since this video is mainly concerned with MicroC OS3 application code, not the source code of the kernel itself, we'll focus on the app group. In particular, we'll be looking at one file from this group, app.c. This file contains both the examples declaration of main and the LED blinking task. As in other C programs, Main is the entry point in programs that incorporate MicroC OS 3. The examples declaration of main incorporates only four function calls, three of which are to kernel API routines. The first function call shown here is not to a kernel function, but to BSP interrupt disable all, which, as its name indicates, is part of the examples BSP or board support package. BSP functions typically manipulate peripheral devices, but BSP interrupt disable all simply sets a bit in one of the special purpose registers on the Avalbot's LM3S9B92 Cortex M3 based microcontroller. The upshot of this action is that interrupts are disabled until MicroC OS3 is ready to accept them. Following the call to BSP interrupt disable all, the example code initializes MicroC OS3 by calling OS init, one of the kernel API functions covered in the previous video in this series. The code then calls two more API functions from the previous video, OS task create and OS start. The former creates a task named app task start, and the latter initiates multitasking by running this new task. App task start, which is the only application task in the example, is declared just below main in app.c. Like all MicroC OS3 tasks, this function has a void return type, and it accepts just one argument avoid pointer. App task start begins with a call to the BSP initialization function BSP init. This call is needed in order to set up the system clock on the Avalbot's LM3S9B92 microcontroller and to initialize the I.O. pins that the example code will use to blink LEDs. A second initialization function CPU init is called after the BSP function. CPU init is responsible for setting up MicroC CPU a MicroM module that supports MicroC OS 3 with routines for disabling interrupts, measuring performance, and performing other CPU-specific operations. This example code never uses MicroC CPU directly and would still run according to expectations if the initialization function were removed. However, because the developers of the example code chose not to omit the call to this function, the code could easily be modified for more extensive use of MicroC CPU. After calling BSP init and CPU init, the example code sets up the tick interrupts that MicroC OS 3 needs in order to provide time delays and other time-based services. These interrupts are typically provided by a timer, and the example code begins the tick initialization by invoking the function BSP CPU clock frequency to determine the timer's frequency. Using the return value of BSP CPU clock frequency, along with the tick rate configured for the example, the code calculates a reset value for the timer. 
As the final step of the initialization, the reset value is written to the timer by OS CPU System Ticketnet, which is part of the MicroC OS 3 port or architecture specific code for the Cortex M3. AppTask Start makes a call to a second MicroC CPU function, CPU TS Timer Frequency Set, before the start of the infinite loop that constitutes the task body. This function sets up MicroC CPU's timestamp facilities using the timer frequency read during tick initializations. As I mentioned earlier, the example code mostly forgoes MicroC CPU services, but initializes the module for the benefit of developers seeking to expand the provided code. The initializations contained in app task start may be the most complicated part of the task. The infinite loop that follows is relatively simple. This loop begins with a call to BSP LED toggle, a BSP function that can be used to change the state of an LED. The argument passed to BSP LED toggle indicates which of a board's LEDs should be targeted by the function. In MicRAM's BSP code, zero typically represents all of the LEDs on a board. So at task start passes this value to toggle both of the avowbot's two LEDs. The second function call in at task start's infinite loop is to the MicroC OS3 API routine OS task queue pinned. As I described in the previous video in this series, OS task queue pinned allows a task to wait for a message to be placed in a queue. Normally, for every call that an application makes to this function, there is a corresponding call to OS task queue post the routine that places a message into a queue. In this example, however, there is no OS task queue post call. OS task queue pin is invoked by itself as a substitute time delay routine. This use of OS task queue pinned is possible because of the function's first argument, the timeout value that I discussed in the last video. Through the timeout value, a task calling OS task queue pinned indicates the maximum amount of time that it is willing to wait for a message to be placed in the queue. Here, the timeout is 100 ticks, or, based on the 1 millisecond tick rate established for the example, 100 milliseconds. App task start will wait for the full duration of this time period on every call to OS task queue pin, because the task's queue will always be empty. Admittedly, OS task queue pin is not the most straightforward means of implementing a time delay. Most tasks that need to perform some action at regular intervals rely instead on MicroC OS 3's actual delay functions, OS Time Delay and OS Time Delay HMSM. OS Task Queue Pin was chosen for the examples in this video because it offers the ability to receive messages and to delay through a single function. Accordingly, it can help to minimize the number of kernel API calls in an application. Although the current example does not utilize the pin function for both receiving messages and delaying, the next one that we will see does. Before moving on to the next example, we will build and run this code, just to verify that it behaves as expected. To build the code, we simply right-click on the example project's name in the workspace window and select Rebuild All from the ensuing menu. Once the build process has completed, with no errors or warnings, we can download the code to the board by clicking the Download and Debug button, which will cause Embedded Workbench's debugger, CSPY, to begin running. We can then run the code by clicking CSPY's Go button. Because the Avalbot has a built-in debugger, a USB connection to the board is all that is needed to download and run code. The example code is running on this board now, and as expected, both of the LEDs are blinking. The LEDs toggle once every 100 milliseconds, based on the delay that I described earlier. For our second example, we'll take a look at application code that manipulates the Avalbot's LEDs as well as its graphics display. This example incorporates pretty much the same files as the project that we just finished reviewing. The only significant differences between the two projects amount to 30 or so lines of code residing primarily in app.c. The second example's copy of app.c begins with the declaration of main that is identical to its counterpart in the first example. Both versions of the function initialize the kernel, create a single task named app task start, and then begin multitasking. In the first example, multitasking means regular context switches involving app task start and the kernel's own tasks. 
In the second example, however, there is an additional application task for the kernel to manage, app task button. The code that creates app task button is actually contained in app task start, following the initialization of the kernel's tick interrupt. This code consists of a single call to OS task create, much like the one made by main. Through the call, the kernel is passed a reference to app task button stack, TCB, and to the function itself. Before looking at the code that follows the OS task create call in app task start, we'll take a look at the declaration of app task button. This task is responsible for monitoring one of the avowbot's push buttons and reporting any button presses to app task start. The variables that it uses to carry out its responsibilities are declared and initialized at the top of the function. The infinite loop comprising the body of app task button follows the variable initializations. At the start of this loop, the task reads the status of one of the push buttons by invoking the BSP routine BSP push button get status. If it determines that a button press has taken place, the task then toggles a variable representing messages to be output to the board's display and it sends the value of this variable to app task start. The communication between app task button and app task start is implemented with task queues. In the previous project, we saw an example of a call to the pin function for task queues, OS task queue pin. And in app task button, we have an example use of the corresponding post function, OS task queue post. For the first argument to this function, app task button provides a reference to app task starts TCB thereby designating the task queue belonging to app task start as the target of the post operation. App task button passes its actual message, the value of the aforementioned variable, through the post function's second argument. After it has checked the button and possibly sent app task start a new variable value, app task button delays itself for 50 milliseconds. As in the first example, the delay is implemented via a call to OS task queue pin. It bears mentioning that this call involves the task queue belonging to app task button and not the one for app task start. In other words, this call does not correspond to the previously described post call. The actual location of the matching pin call for the button tasks post is in app task start. The pinned is the first call made in the start task's infinite loop. When the pin function returns, app task start checks the value retrieved from the queue and, based on that value, writes either micrium microc os3 or ti avowbot to the OLED display. We can build this example by following the simple procedure that I described earlier. An avowbot running the example's code will first display micrium microc os3, as this board is. When the button labeled switch1 is pressed, app task button will detect the press and will send a new value to the start task, causing the message ti avowbot to appear. If we wanted to do something a little more impressive than writing messages to a display or blinking a few LEDs, microc OS3 and the avowbot certainly give us the potential for much more powerful applications. The two examples that we've seen today are intended to indicate how easy writing multitask applications can be, not how much this sort of application can accomplish. With just a few additions, though, we can begin to transform the examples into substantially more impressive pieces of code. The autonomous motor control example now running on this board is comprised of only eight tasks, and it does not exceed the 32 kilobyte code limit set by the Kickstart version of Embedded Workbench. You can read about this Avalbot example, and others like it, in the TI version of the MicroC OS 3 book. Everything that you'll need to begin running MicroC OS 3 on the Avalbot, aside from the board itself, is provided with this book, including links to the development tools and to the kernel source code. The book is now available for free in PDF form, and you can download your copy from MicRim's website. In this series of videos, we've only scratched the surface of what can be done with a real-time kernel. However, with the MicroC OS 3 book and the example projects that it describes, you'll be well on your way to writing multitask applications that realize the full potential of feature-rich hardware platforms like the Avalbot board. Thanks for watching.